graph of g of x, we want to sketch the graph of the inverse. So in our notes before, we said graphically, that's like reflecting over this diagonal line. So we can draw in the diagonal line, y equals x. You need to flip things over a diagonal line. Now, sometimes <coughs> it's hard for our brain to actually flip something over a diagonal line. Our brain does well flipping vertically and flipping horizontally. Okay? Flipping diagonally is sometimes tricky. But on an exam, they'll never notice if you cheat and take your paper and turn it. The diagonal line is now horizontal. Flip it and then turn it back. It's perfectly aligned. So if you want to flip this over a horizontal line, you just take your paper and take it out of control. Oh, and I muted good because I was just talking about a cheat and I flipped in that wasn't on there. So graphically, we're going to flip over the line y equals x. The other note that we put in there graphically is that if you have a point, for example, this one is at negative 4, 4, you just switch the x and the y points. So now you would have four negative points. This point here, which is at, oops, I'll do it in red, 1, 3, I switch my x and y coordinates, it becomes 3, 1. So we do that to all four points, and now we have to connect our dots. The other thing I want you to notice is wherever the graph intersected the line y equals x, those points are going to be the same. So if you turned your page so that y equals x was a horizontal line, can you see that the red one has been flipped over to match the blue one? Part B is the inverse a function? No. I don't know if you remember the vertical line test from previous years. We use the vertical line test to test if something is a function. If you have a vertical line and you drag it along your graph and at any point that vertical line hits your graph at more than one point, it is not a function. So the red one is a function because if I drag this line across I never hit the red graph in more than one point. But the blue one is not a function because there are many places where I have the vertical line hit more than one point. So, no. doesn't pass the vertical line test, that means that there are some x values that have more than one y value. And if an x value has more than one y value, we don't say it's a function. Basically, in math, we want something to function, like a calculator, you want to function, you want to push in 2 plus 2 and you want it to have one answer. You don't want it to decide different times it's different answers. You're really frustrated. 2 plus 2, 7. It's not it. 2 plus 2, 4. Sometimes my calculator says 7. Sometimes my calculator says 4. This would be confusing. We would probably say my calculator is not functioning. So even in the English language, we have this idea come up. In mathematics, if something's a function, then every x value gives you only one y value. Anytime it gives you more than one y value, it is a problem. Then part C, take the domain and range of both. So for our red graph, we have a smallest x value in minus 4, a biggest x value in positive 3. And we have a smallest y value in minus 1 and the biggest y value in positive 4. For our blue graph, 
we have now the smallest x value in minus 1 and a biggest x value in 4. And for our blue graph, we have a smallest y value of negative 4 and a biggest y value of 3. And I want you to notice that if algebraically and graphically things are getting switched, algebraically you switch x and y, graphically you take the coordinates and you switch x and y, look at your domain and range. It should make sense that if my x's got switched to y's, my domain becomes my range. And if my y's got switched to x's, my range becomes my domain. Circle questions four and nine. 